In this video, I am going to show you how to do a basic workflow using Git for source control and linking that up with GitHub. I'm using Xcode 12 beta 3 for this video, but the same principles apply for Xcode 11 as well. Uh, there's not enough changes that it really applies to what we're doing here. If you're not familiar with using GitHub with Xcode, I have a video that shows how you can set that up and use a repository that links between the remote and the local on your machine and get working with that. I'll put a link in the show notes and it also appears on the bottom of the screen for you. So what have we got here? Well, I'm going to show you what I've got here, right? The source code doesn't matter for this, so don't pay too much attention to that. But I've got this remote repository here on GitHub. Right now, if I go here and show you, there's only one branch. There's the master branch but it does have a bunch of commits. In Xcode, you can see the same thing. So I've got the project open here. And if you look on the left-hand side, you can see that we have only the master branch. We also have the origin master here, which is that GitHub repo that I just showed you. Now, in order to demonstrate sort of a basic workflow here, we're gonna have to do a few things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a file here and I'm just gonna make a change because right now, what you'll notice, if I go over to the source control tab, I don't have any changes to commit. If I go up to the menu and choose source control commit or option command C, you'll see there are no changes. Everything's up to date. So there's nothing here for me to do. So I'm just going to hit cancel. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to a Swift file here. It doesn't really matter what the file is or what the change is. And I'm just going to replace this comment here. And I'm just going to put something a little more, a little more meaningful. So the description um, here is going to be uh, returns the current date and time in the correct format. And here it's going to return a string. A string of the correct the formatted date and time. And I'm just going to save that. Doesn't matter what it is. Like I say, for the purpose of this video, I just need to make a change. Now, if I go over to the source control tab, you're going to notice at first, if I bring up master, there's nothing here. We haven't made a commit yet, right? So I'm going to go up to source control and I'm going to choose commit or option command C. So let's do option command C and it brings up the commit panel. And now it recognizes, Hey, you made a change in this file. If I click on this file, it's going to show me the change. So what it's going to say is, look, here's what you've put in, you know, on the left and, and here's what it's replacing on the right. And so I can just check that everything there and I can say either, you know, discard that change or don't commit. Obviously I do want to commit this one. So this is correct. This file over here is going to replace this file over here in the repository. Now I've got a check mark here. So this is the only file that's going to be committed. All the others don't have a check mark. I'm not going to commit those to source control. They're mostly related to project files that, you know, really only specific to me on my machine. They don't really matter for source control. I do have to put a commit message in here just so when I see the commit, I know what this is all about. So I'm just going to say added documentation to the date formatter function. And that's what I'm going to put in there. Notice down here, there's this push to remote. Now what you can do here, there's two, two things. You can either just commit the file locally to your repository or at the same time, you can push it up to the remote. I'll be honest, I always check this box and push it up to the remote so I can push it to master. So I'm just going to say commit one file and push. It's going to take a few seconds here. So you'll see that the list here is updated and at the top here it shows me that the origin master, which is the remote one, this one here, right, this remote and my master branch now both have this new commit. You can see the, you know, the information over here. There's the commit message and the file. So that's happened locally. Let's go over to the web browser here. And if I just go back to the main repository here, you'll see that 30 seconds ago, I updated this file and everything's good, right? So that's a basic commit. Now let's cover something else. Let's say, you know, there's a common flow here, right? This master branch, you should never really work on the master branch, even if you, you work by yourself. Now let's say that I want to make uh, a change that I'm not sure about, all right? Maybe it's a new feature or I want to do some refactoring, something else. You should make that on a separate branch 
so that all the content of the master branch is protected and you don't screw up the source code everywhere. So what I'm going to do is create a new branch. I'm going to right click on master and I'm going to branch from master and it's going to ask me for a new name. And in this one, I'm going to call this one. Um, let's just call this new readme and I'll change the readme file. So I'm going to go create. Now, sometimes it doesn't update it here in Xcode. I've noticed you sort of have to help it a little bit. There you go. So now there's this new readme branch, which at the moment you can see here, it's saying, look, you know, it's in sync. It's up to date with the master branch and the remote master branch makes sense, right? We just made the copy of the master branch. That's all we've done here. Let's go back to our files and I'm just going to take the readme file and I'm just going to put in some, some new documentation here. Um, so let's just change something. Let's change this. So meta maker and the name of the app generates either a file or copy to the clipboard. And okay, there we go. I'm going to save that. Let's go back over to our source control here. So on this tab now, when I click on this and I do option command C, it's going to say, oh, you know what? You made a change to the readme. Here it is. This is again on the left is the new one. On the right is the old one here. So I'm going to say, okay, that's fine. You know, uh, I'm just going to say updated the readme file description. And I'm going to save it. What I'm not going to do on this one, just to show you something different, is push it to the remote. So I'm going to commit that file. Now what you're going to see is this branch, the new readme branch, is one commit ahead of the master branch. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. If I click on the master branch, if I was to change back to the master branch, in fact, let's do it, right? I'm going to check out, as we call it, the master branch here. And I'm going to say, yep, I want to check it out. Now, if I go back over to my source files, you're going to see that that readme on that branch, it doesn't have the new content, right? Because this branch has not been updated. We updated the, the other branch. So let's go back to over here, check out new readme again. We're going to check that out. I'm going to say check out. Let's go back over and look at the file quickly. And you're going to see, look, there's the updated text, right? So let's say this was a feature that I was working on or some bug fixes, whatever it may be. And I've determined that this is now safe to merge back in to the master branch of code, right? This is very common format that we work with on teams. We all go off on our own branches. We do our things. And then once everything's ready, it gets merged safely back into the master branch or develop branch, whichever one it may be. Um, and then we know that we're hopefully not going to affect anyone else's code, right? So we've determined that this feature, this change is now okay. And we need to bring this back into the master branch. Now, why might we do that? Well, most of the time, if not all of the time, you're going to find that, you know, whether it's a manual build process or an automated system, whatever it may be, if it's pulling from source control, they are going to pull from the master branch. Now, you know, in a more complex setup, you can have it pulled from other branches and you don't have to have it set up for the master branch. But this is the common format you're going to see, right? The master branch is kind of the source of truth of the release code, if you like. This is the code that you're saying, I want this to go to production. So let's say that any changes and I can make as many commits as I want in here. I've only made one, you know, there could be hundreds of different commits, right? And so at this point, the new readme branch is further ahead. It has newer content than the master branch. So what I need to do now is merge that new readme branch back into master and pull in all those changes that I've made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check out master. And then on the new readme branch here, I'm going to say, OK, I need to merge new readme into master. Now, it's important that you, you know, you make sure you get this the right way, right? And, you know, before you do it, always stop and read it and make sure you got it the right way around. So, you know, again, I'm on the master branch. This is my current branch. And I want to bring the changes from new readme over into master. And that's what we're going to do. So notice again, the master branch at the moment, 
right? The remote branch, uh, the remote repository, sorry, and the local one are in sync on the master branch. And the last commit was added documentation to the date forward matter function. So now again, I'm going to right click on new readme and I'm going to merge into master. So I'm going to click there and it's going to say, are you really sure you want to do that? And I'm going to say, yes, merge it. Now, there may be situations where you have conflicts and that's slightly more advanced. We're not going to cover that in this video, but you'll see here now master branch has that new commit that we made, right? It's got the commit that we made on the new readme branch. And you know this as well, because look, it's saying here, the master branch and the new readme branch are in sync and they're both at the same point. Okay. And also notice the remote branch master, the remote repository on GitHub is now further behind our local one, right? Because we've made the changes locally. We merged in that content, but we haven't pushed it to the remote repository. So at the moment, if anyone else was using this code and they pulled down that repository or that master branch from the re remote repository, they won't get this new merge commit that we've made here because it only exists for us. And as a further pointer, we know this because if you look on the left here, there's an up arrow with a one and that one and the arrow is saying, as you can see in the tooltip, we are one commit ahead of the remote repository, which we also know when we look here. So what we now need to do is we need to push this merge that we've made up to the remote repository. So I'm just going to go up to the menu, go source control and push. And when I do that, it's going to say, okay, you know, which one do you want to push it to? I do want to push it to the remote master and I'm just going to say push. And now that I've done that, you can see that not only are my two local branches, but also my re remote one are now in sync and they're all up to date and everything's current. We can check that again if we go back over to the web here and I'm just going to refresh this. We can immediately see the change here because of the readme file, right? This is the change that we made and the readme file by default is going to be displayed on GitHub. But we can go over and we can also look here and we can see, you know, um, six minutes ago, right? Update updated the readme file description, readme.md. And then there's our previous one from eight minutes ago. So this is a very quick introduction of a basic workflow using source control to create branches, make commits, keep them in sync with the remote repository. And at the same time, if anyone else makes any changes, you know, when you do a pull down, you're going to pull down their changes just the same as they would pull down the ones you make. And we've created a new branch in Xcode without leaving Xcode. There was no terminal involved or anything else. We did it all in Xcode. So hopefully this makes sense to you. Watch the video a few times if it doesn't, or reach out to me uh, on Twitter at CompileSwift, or you can go to compileswift.com forward slash contact. Or of course, you can comment on this video below and ask questions and I'll try and help you out. But that is a very basic source control flow using Xcode.